Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is amazing. And I truly mean that because I love your beautiful faces. I actually have my caramel albino mango snake. You might remember I've got a bunch of those cool things that Jenna Sink does and a bunch of other cool mango snakes. Uh, well, unfortunately, they can sometimes be a little bit tricky and we've tried everything. We tried frozen pinkies, live pinkies, we tried lizard scented pinkies. So now we're at that point where we're gonna have to try to assist feed them just to get them going. Sometimes one or two assist feedings, just like we do with the ball fight is what really can save these guys' lives. I'm gonna give you a technique, and you may notice my little apparatus here. This is what you do with an arboreal snake. So the first thing I do is I have a little pinky part here. I, I know, it's kind of gross, guys. It's a frozen pinky part. But I'm gonna gently, gently, gently take it like this, and I'm gonna go ahead and just try to open its mouth. Sometimes I'll just get, sometimes I can just get it in with the pinky. Sometimes I can use an actual finger or something like that. You can see right off the bat, it, it's kind of biting it. But listen, it's gonna spit it out like this. So I'm gonna do the same thing I do with ball pythons. And I'm gonna very gently get it in here. And then again, I want to let go of this to where it's gonna stay inside of its mouth. And once it stays in its mouth, see, then I'm gonna drop it down like this. But this time, I'm actually gonna put it on a branch. Because if I don't put it on a branch, if I put it on the ground, it's gonna flip around and it's gonna just spit that out. Now that it's dangling from that branch, much like it would do in the wild, it's gonna probably, hopefully, not be able to get it out of its mouth and then it'll actually eat it like this. So I'm gonna now just step back and be quiet and just let it see if it actually will eat it. Don't know what's gonna happen. This is the first meal that it's gonna take here. So uh, fingers crossed, it this works. So you can see right now when it starts to kind of move those jaws, that's, it's actually like, what should I do with this? It's in my mouth, should I swallow it? I can't really spit it out because I'm on this branch and that's one of the reasons why I use the branch like this. So they can't use the actual surface of their enclosure to rub the pinky and actually get it out of their mouth. And after a while, it'll eventually say, I might as well go ahead and eat it. And you can start to see that it's doing that kind of mouthing back and forth and back and forth and it's actually starting to swallow it. This is absolutely what I want, training this animal to actually eat. And there it goes. It's going right down past and its mouth is closed. Now all it has to do is undulate it down into its belly. That was absolutely what I was hoping to see. And that's it. I mean, finally it's got its meal in them. And the fact is, is that this is again, a caramel albino recessive mutation. Pretty good chances that this was actually a wild caught animal that came in as a baby because really no one's producing actual captive caramel albinos in the country that I know of. And unfortunately, I don't know the entire back history. So this might have been the first meal that it's taken since it's been in the country. With that being said, that nutrition is gonna really help it a tremendous amount and it did pretty well. It definitely kind of just didn't know what to do but that just starts to teach it again. I don't want to force feed these animals. I want them to take it down themselves because it teaches them to actually eat. Now, in the future, this might have to happen one, two, three more times, but eventually it's gonna start taking food on its own. This is the way to kind of train a snake that doesn't want to eat to eat. Again, if this was a wild caught, which I believe it probably was, it probably was eating native lizards that were cruising around. Well, I don't have that ability, right? So we have to get it to train over to rodents, and this was a pretty good first step. But actually, these Gemacincta here were actually captive bred. So the fact is, is that this animal has just probably never eaten a meal in its entire life, and eventually it's gonna be a problem, right? It's already refused food for the last three weeks. At this point, I feel if we go much longer, it could actually be a problem. So we're gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing as we did with the caramel albino, and who doggy, is this thing absolutely gorgeous. Now, thankfully, the caramel albino and the Gemacincta right here are actually really good body weight wise. So I'm not terribly concerned about it, but I don't want to get to a point where they're depleted in nutrition because then you're kind of fighting an uphill battle, right? So we're just going to do the exact same thing. Just kind of get its mouth to get open. Sometimes you just have to use your finger just a little bit to get it going. And then I can slip this in and you can see it bit right away. Whoa, it actually started to try to eat this right away. Oh, it just spit it out. It literally seemed like it was gonna eat it right off the rip. So I'm gonna just try this again. Get it in its mouth just a little bit. And this guy seems to be really pretty cooperative. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna set it down on this branch here. Just like that. 
and I think this is gonna eat right away. I'm gonna walk away, so I'm not in its view. And there it goes. It's starting to use that kind of scissor motion that their mouth uses to help push it down their gullet. This is amazing. This one definitely went way better than the caramel albino. Sure enough, it looks like it's gonna crush this. This is great news. And again, I think one or two more times, and this thing should start eating on its own. And there it goes. I mean, what an absolutely gorgeous animal. I love these guys. And of course, when these get older, unfortunately, they turn jet black, which is really cool. I mean, I love the baby color, but the jet black is awesome too. So I'm gonna go ahead, just set this one back down, and uh, we'll move on to the last Boega that we have to assist me today. But so far, it's went very well. I'm super happy these guys have some nutrition in them because uh, that's gonna get them going, and eventually they'll be eating on their own. And then this little monkey here is probably the trickiest one of all. This was captive hatched by the guys over there at Scales and Tails of Ohio, and it definitely has not fed. And it's definitely a little bit small. It was a smaller baby, smaller than the Gemacinctus, so uh, it's something that would have to do even a smaller little piece and hope for the best. And it's a feisty little monkey trying to strike and stuff like that. Maybe that'll be a good sign. Again, very gently, I'm gonna do this, and I'm assuming that because it was a little bit feisty, it might open its mouth just like that for me. Now again, because this is a fresh baby, it might give us a little bit more problem. I'm not sure. So I wanted the piece of pinky to be small enough that it would have a really hard time spitting it out. I'm just gonna, again, just so you can see, it's really already fighting me. Unlike the Gemacinta that seemed to be interested right off the rip, so I'm just gonna make sure that it's down there, kind of close its mouth just a little bit on it so its teeth grabs it, and you can see it's already fighting a little bit. This isn't a good sign by any stretch, and it's already spit it out. So again, patience, people. Patience, patience, patience. It is not easy, and it's sometimes very frustrating. You know, you're like, come on, just eat it. But you have to be patient. Again, this guy is just really, really gonna give me a hard time. I can tell already, just by the way, when they have their mouth wide open like that, that's a bad thing because it's doing everything it can possibly do to spit this out. So I have to get it really seated in its gullet. I don't wanna force feed it by any stretch, but I wanna seat it in its gullet. And then I'm gonna hope that maybe if I put it on this branch, it won't spit it out. But I'm not sure what's gonna happen. So I'm just gonna back away and let's see what happens. And success, all of them were able to assist feed again, which will really help them get some nutrition in them and hopefully train them to actually start eating on their own. Unfortunately, sometimes little snakes can be tough and little boega like mangroves in particular, <laughs> this is a little feisty monkey too, uh, they actually sometimes can be a little bit tricky. So uh, this is just part of the deal guys, it is good. And what we've noticed with the ones that we've been producing is they've been feeding really well right off the bat. So I think when you get into F2, F3, F4 generation, they're gonna be much, much better. These are really fresh. These are F1 generation captives, or like I mentioned, maybe right out of the wild. So it's a little bit more tricky, but uh, nevertheless, we did get them to eat, and that's pretty awesome. Guys, today is the day I'm so excited. We actually are open tonight at the Reptarium, and Drogo, of course, Hi buddy, good morning sweetheart, is gonna be on display for the very first time tonight. So not only can people see him through the actual window, but we are gonna be offering encounters so people can actually come in and uh, kind of get to meet him. So that's gonna be pretty amazing. It's been a long journey. I know honey, you look so good this morning. Good morning, how are you? Are you okay baby boy? Are you okay? Hi baby. You are doing so good. I am so excited because finally people are gonna be able to see up and close. And if he comes out, which he seems to kind of be always interested in people, he sometimes comes right up to that window. You can see his actual nose marks that he does on that night where he comes up and he just kind of nudges and he's kind of just curious. So I have a feeling it's gonna go really, really well. Right, Drogo? I know, buddy. You're looking so good. I love you so much. It's going to be amazing. So, hey, uh, I tell you what, if you're into sloths and you want to have a sloth experience, now you can do it at the Reptarium. You know, when I'm down here in the dungeon, it seems like I'm talking about ball pythons all the time, especially when it comes to the breeding season. But, of course, we're breeding a lot of other things. And this Stimson's python is the first of the Antaracea, which are the dwarf pythons from Australia that actually ovulated. So, uh, this is going to be our first little pygmy pythons. Of course, we have Stimson's 
spotteds and children's and it looks like we're going to have a really good year with them as well i mean everything's been breeding super good but this little girl here should be our first clutch coming up here probably in about a month and a half she'll have eggs and i would assume she'll have somewhere between six and maybe ten eggs something like that absolutely wonderful australian animals so again things are definitely heating up down here when it comes to breeding not just with ball pythons and even my savu girl here is starting to swell for an ovulation you can see this kind of distended scales and she's kind of rounding out i have a feeling she'll probably ovulate here within the next seven to ten days so again i was really hoping that we were going to produce savus this year because you guys remember we produced like 12 last year and i was going to keep them all and Lori ended up selling them all except for one on me uh so this year definitely if we produce i'm going to hang on to some more because i absolutely love savu pythons this girl is actually a Woma Python that I've had for like 20 years. She is a big, awesome Woma Python. And with any luck, maybe we'll get one last breeding season with her. She's taken the last couple years off, but she's starting to swell up and she's starting to look pretty good. So we have a few Woma Pythons breeding this year. So again, it's not just all about ball pythons. There's actually a lot of things that we breed down here in the dungeon. And ooh, doggy, look at the size of this Brazilian rainbow boa. Now we haven't started breeding the Brazilian rainbow boas yet but we're going to in the next probably two three weeks tops because they're typically like february march breeders and then they'll have babies you know july august something like that but we have a bunch of female brazilians that are huge like this so it should be a really good year again we'll be breeding those guys as well as the colombian rainbows you guys know we're working with a few different mutations on this we do have hypomelanistic brazilian rainbow boas too which are going to be pretty cool and then of course all the sand boas start getting bred too so uh things are heating up here so it's not just about ball pipe like I said, don't get me wrong, I love the ball python side of it, but these guys are going to be absolutely amazing. I can't wait for little live baby rainbow boas. It's uh, it's going to be absolutely epic this year. Remember when we built all the little floaty things for the turtles just so that they have more surface area to get out of the water? Well, it's been working great. It's been about three days since we've had it in there. The turtles are always up on them. They're swimming around now. They have so much more surface area, and that was just something that we didn't realize that baby turtles needed as much of. We thought that with the logs that we had and stuff that was plenty but we noticed that it was just kind of like again they were stressing out weren't doing as well now they are crushing it and doing amazing like i had mentioned we're going to kind of spruce them up a little bit we'll have lori come back and put some like moss on them so it looks a little bit more like this eventually with all the other ones but we just wanted to test it out but i couldn't be more happy with three days in and it's working amazing i mean every time i walk by all the little turtles are up on here and i think that tonight when we're open for the reptarium people are going to love it because they're going to be able to see more turtles not just in the water but on land too so uh, this is working out great I'm sure just a handful of assist feeds on those boega and they'll all get eating on their own that's just kind of the process with little tricky animals and like I mentioned the longer you go breeding them you know f2 f3 f4 generations the more they're gonna eat pinkies right off the rip just like the ones we've been breeding for the last few years which are the melanota mangroves so uh, we'll get them going and it's gonna be amazing if you did like this video could you do me a favor here's a playlist right over here if you just click one or two of those videos it really helps my channel so I really do appreciate that you could also right up here subscribe to my podcast channel that way you can listen to me talk about all kinds of reptile stuff on this side you can certainly help us get to 3 million we're getting close guys only like 50,000 away so hit that subscription button as well as turn your post notifications on have an absolutely wonderful day remember be kind to somebody and I promise I'll see you tomorrow